After about two years of owning and living in the White House, Tash and I have finally bought our first home, which means that our tiny home on wheels is up for sale. Let's take a closer look. This is what our off-grid stealth camper looks like from the front, from the passenger side, from the back, and from the driver's side. So let's talk about the technical specs. It is a 1997 Toyota Hiace and it is self-contained for two people until 2024. It's got a registration and it has a warrant of fitness which you can't see from up there. It's actually a daily driver for me and it's been driven 162,000 Ks. Oh, it is a five-speed manual. This is what I like to call the cockpit. Looking around, there's a radio, works fine. There's an auxiliary input. There's not a lot more to say about that. Now this little button here is an isolator switch. And if I push that, it turns on that inverter there. That's a 90 watt inverter and it's got four USB ports and a 220 volt output. What else have we got here? This, this is a rubbish bin. The rubbish bin is designed with this wee string thing on there. I don't know if you can see this string. Uh, the string goes on to the hooks and that's how you keep the bags in. And it's super handy when you're driving around. The next are these cup holders. We want it to have cup holders, especially on long journeys. These cup holders are fantastic. They all sit on this base. And then we've got this brass monkey. It's a fridge freezer. Also has another USB charger. Never used it, but it's there. Oh, this is a little clip on. And as you can see, it's, there's a couple of wires there. It's wired in. And if I put the van into reverse, it now turns into a reversing camera right in the middle of that. Yeah, which is super handy when you are driving a vehicle this size. I'll take you around to the other side. If you have a look, that inverter has a cable in it and the cable's sort of been wired in to sit inside the glove box and it's just an iPhone charger. It's like an extra long iPhone charger. I charge my phone off of there, Tash charges her phone off of here and everyone's happy boys. While we're here, let's check out this bit of storage. So in here, we usually put our drink bottles, uh, cameras and things like that. And when you have a van like this, you wanna capitalize on any storage that you can get. These holes let the heat out so you can still warm up your feet with the heater going. Okay, pull that back. Behind the passenger seat is the 10 litre tank for the diesel heater and isolator switches for all our electrics. So we've got lights, inverter, fridge, water pump, heater and USB that sticks coming off. Uh, and then down here just on the inside we've actually got fuses for everything so every circuit is fuse protected back here we've also got the 500 watt inverter and this inverter actually powers uh, everything inside the cabin so power comes from here goes down through underneath the sink and out to the other side i'll show you that in a minute but this is everything we've got behind the passenger seat. Let's talk about the water system. Behind the driver's seat, we've got a 20 liter tank. Now this is fixed into place and it comes with a filling hose. The bronze part goes on top of that there. And then this end goes on any tap. There's a few different attachments on there. Uh, and it lets you fill that up, up to 20 liters. That just sits there. I have a couple of extra bottles that I like to keep as well, because you can't have too much water. So that's the first lot of fresh water, 20 liters. Then we come around here into the cabin part of it. And there's a little latch here that goes up. And under there is our second water container. This sits nicely in that gap there. And there's a tap that goes onto that bit there. So if you ever have to fill up water and there isn't a tap close to the van, you can fill this up and then transfer water from here into the main tank and you're good to go. There's more storage that goes in here and I'll show you that in just a minute. And there's another latch here just to make sure nothing moves around. The toilet sits under the sink bench there. It's on wheels and it's really super easy to use. You just pull it out and use it, put it away. Um, you can sit on this and use it as a seat as well. So there we go. So if you're just sitting here, do your dishes, your makeup. Let's look under the bench here. Under the bench, we've got our gray water tank and 
let's just have a look in there. So it comes from the sink all the way down uh, into this 20 litre tank, which is also fixed into place. And this is a little tap here. So you can turn this uh, to shut or turn it to open and it goes out the side of the van and down the bottom and there's another hose that we use to empty it. Now right in the back there that is the electric water pump and just next to it is a fire extinguisher. This is our kettle, it just sits in the sink there and there's a reason for that. It's, uh, it's a really awkward shape and it's hard to store anywhere else. This is our sink, this just makes sure that the sink doesn't get scratched by the kettle. This you can shut just like that and you can open it up when you want to drain things. Shut it off again nice and easy. This is actually custom built. It's a watt which we turned into a sink with all of these. My dad used to be a plumber and he gave me all of these parts and I turned it into a tap. It swivels uh, which is quite nice. See this side is just for decoration. This side works. You can control the flow of water through there. Turn on the water pump. You push the button like that and you get water. So you only ever use as much as you need. And that's the sound of the water pump uh, from inside. And I think that is our entire plumbing system. Super simple, works really, really well. Let's talk about this beautiful kettle for, for a minute. We wanted one that would match the sink because we knew it would sit inside the sink. This is a whistling kettle, so if I take this off, this whistles when your water starts boiling uh, but a lot of the time you don't need to completely boil water especially for things like coffee so we've got this temperature gauge here which just slots into here like that so you can actually make your coffee at the perfect temperature every single time it saves on gas and it saves you water and all of that so that just sits in there like that that is our full plumbing system let's talk about electrics so this is one of our big purchases. It is the 30 litre Brass Monkey fridge freezer. It works really, really well, keeps things cold, and you can freeze things in it as well. Push the button, it comes on, and that is the internal temperature of the fridge right now, and you just set the temperature to whatever you want it to be. I like one degree because that keeps everything nice and cool. The amazing thing about this fridge is that it doubles as a voltmeter for the auxiliary battery, which means that you never have to worry about running your battery down too far. Very, very, very useful. I'm just gonna turn that off. Behind the fridge is the DC to DC charger. It's got a few lights on there, so the type of battery the charge level whether it's using a solar charge or being charged from the alternator uh, and then back here we have a curtain it's double insulated blackout curtain and you just shut that like that and no light gets in or out we have a 500 watt inverter up here that supplies power into the cabin these are our lights they are LED strip lights and they are super bright in the back next to the beds we have wireless chargers there's two of them one on each side and how they work you grab your phone you use it you put it back and it, it'll just charge it'll charge overnight which is amazing then in here we've got USB chargers we've got slots for two and one is taken up by the phone charger you can obviously just pull that apart and chuck another charger in there uh, then we've got these 12 volt cigarette chargers and these come in super handy in summer we've got a fan that we put up in here so we've got one on both sides so there's plenty of power for all your devices and then in the front here we've got two plugs for anything else like laptops or whatever else you wanted to use and this the power here is supplied by the inverter up there this is a good time to point out the diesel heater diesel heater is superb it's incredible it works really really well it's actually installed just in there hidden away so most of it is hidden away under there. Just going to take this off for you there. Uh, the power comes through there along with the fuel, goes in through there, and it just pumps out heat through there. And it takes about 20 minutes to heat up the entire van. It's fantastic. The auxiliary battery goes right there under the bed. It's 270 amp hours and weighs about 60 kgs. Inside this cupboard, pull this one out like that there's an RCD system with circuit breakers we do have some fairy lights which was actually given to us by a friend and you can't see them right now but they turn on and it's just nice mood lighting which is kind of cool I enjoy them 
And of course, everything is powered by this 200 watt solar panel on the roof. Let's talk about storage. There is plenty of it. Everything has a place and every place has a thing. So in here we usually put our jandals or umbrellas and things like that. This is a wee shoe rack that we've come up with and we just stick our shoes in there. This here is a bin. Same concept as the one in the front. It has that string that'll hold, uh, hold your bag in place and you just replace the bag as you want. There's a bit of storage up here and we usually use this for bottles. Whether it be bottles of wine or, or water bottles or anything like that. So we like to pop that in there. But when it's not in there, this is just our curtain. This here used to be a garden, but it doesn't actually get a lot of sun. And uh, we started using it to store our water bottles and things like that, which works really quite well. And then we've got these uh, sort of shelfy things, which have, I don't know if you can see, oh, there we go. So they have this non-stick padding all the way down the bottom. So there's one there and it goes all the way across there. There's a square one right down the end here and that's for toothbrushes, hand wash, things like that. That storage goes all the way across there. This knife block is actually um, something that we got and sort of customized. Um, it's got all the knives that you'll ever need and then cheese knives, which are magnetic. So they just sit on there like that put them off, use them, put them back, which is really quite good. So that's all that storage. We used to put jars in here, but you can really put anything. Little boxes, little boxes of tissue or whatever you want. This is our mirror. This is our paper towel holder. This keeps it from unraveling. You just pull it out like that when you want to refill it. This was designed by Tash and we love it. It's beautiful. On here is where we would usually put our hand towel. We don't have one in here now because we haven't actually lived in here for a wee while. Then we've got this that used to be a spice rack and there used to be I don't know, 28 spices on here. The spices have since moved to our new home. So this is how it comes. You can use it for whatever you like. Uh, there's a little box inside a box essentially in here and this was just for our salt and pepper grinders because they had a very specific width uh, and they would sort of bounce around if they were sort of out here so we made this just to keep those in this is our pantry the pantry has a mix of shelves and drawers and this was strategically done to make sure we can use up all the space so this is a shelf this is, uh, it has more storage up here, which is why this had to be a shelf. So you can slide things in and stand them up all the way under there. And it's actually fairly deep. Let me just stick my arm in there, look at that. Still haven't touched the end yet. Um, so that's quite deep. Then we have a drawer and the drawer comes all the way out with a little wee handle on there. And then the bottom again is a shelf. And again, it's because there's extra bits of space that we didn't want to lose by putting a drawer in and that goes all the way in there. This drawer comes out as well so that you can access things all the way down the back if you wanted to. Everything has this little latch that just kind of pops into place like that. And that's the pantry. This is our cutlery drawer. I'll show you why. It opens out like this. The lines are, are actually from the sides of the drawers, which we didn't quite foresee when, when we built the van. This is for all the cutlery and things like that. You can put your forks, knives, spoons, longer spoons, spatulas, things like that, tongs and stuff will go in here. And then sort of less used things for the back. And we shut that. This is for chopping board, plates, cups, things like that. This also comes off, of course. And then down here, we've got two gas mate stoves. These stoves are fantastic. They put out tons of heat. Just gonna chuck it on there. They use this canister. Uh, this is uh, 220 grams uh, butane gas. So chuck that in there and then just pop that into place and they fire up. And that's how they work. Super, super easy. You shut that, you cook what you want. There we go. Now you're making coffee. When you're done, you put that back. You unplug the canister and then you put this straight back where you found it. So all of these shelves are really quite deep, quite good for storage. So we're gonna shut that. And then we're gonna get into here again. Just show you some more bits of storage. 
So this here is a shelf. We used to put our chopping boards in here, but you can put whatever you want, really. It's just a quite a thin bit of space there. Then we've got space all the way along here and in there. And that is usually where we would stand up some cans, spray and wipes, things like that. Again, the same concept down here. We would stand things up and in these in here, there's a whole nother bit of storage there. And of course the toilet goes into this bit here. We'll shut that. And this needs a latch because the toilet gets heavy and it pushes on the door and the door used to keep flying open. So we put a little latch in there and it holds everything secure. This here is the, I wanna say the fourth door that we've got. Uh, we drink a lot of tea, so we originally designed these for teas. There's two of those, so you can do what you like with that. Third drawer and fourth drawer. Underneath, of course, is electrics. Then we've got storage under the bed. That's the battery. We wanted to use up every bit of space that we could. So we built these crates. So this, this is one, and it goes in, and then it kind of pushes along and sort of hides, sort of hides under there, which is really quite good. Then we've got the second big crate. This sort of goes in like that. And now that's nice and tidy. Then we pull this latch up, bring this up. And we've got a third crate that pushes all the way into there. Fourth crate fills up that space. So that's what it looks like. And then we pop that down pop the latch in. The reason for that, again for the latch, is because we've got that extra tank behind these two crates, which can push forwards if you brake hard. So this flippy flappy keeps everything from flying out the front. You'll notice black marks, and these are from the crates being pulled out and just rubbing against here. This here keeps the mattress from sliding forwards. Overhead storage, we've got all of this uh, up there. Just zoom in. Up there, you can put a laptop, iPad, books, whatever you like, up in that gap. And then there's overhead storage all the way here. And that's for all the little things that go missing. So your deodorant, your keys, actually keys go on that little hook right there. Uh, but anything else that you wanted to put up there, they serve two purposes, and I'll tell you about that in just a minute. Then we've got these cubby holes with lids. There's three of them on each side, and they go all the way, all the way back. And there's tons of storage in there, so let's one that's two and you can put all your clothes in here and there's two reasons why we've put storage along the side of the bed one when you put things in here it creates insulation so it, it creates a little cocoon for you and then it comes up further than the window see the windows all the way down here uh, and what that does is with the overhead storage coming down further than the window and this storage coming up further than the window when you shut the curtains at night there's no light leakage so the light doesn't leak out you can't tell someone's in here at night with these blackout curtains but we'll get into those in a little bit let's continue with storage in the back we have these drawers they pull out on the side of the drawers there's just more storage then the drawers pull all the way out like that you open them up and there's storage all the way to the end you don't have to reach in anywhere you just pull the drawer out nice and easy these drawers are made from structural ply which means they are strong strong enough for you to just sit on if you wanted to just like that you can cook on here you can sit on here you can pull the mattress out with both the drawers open you can pull the mattress all the way out here and lay down you can do whatever you want really this is our second stowage this is a drainage pipe there's a jack a few other bits and bobs in there next to the bed the storage is just this deep it's just a little little cubby hole for whatever you wanted to put in there and then you've got an extra private bit here and then we've got a little flippy flappy i don't know if you can see this down here you open this up and there's more storage under there by raising this we haven't actually lost any space we've utilized every single bit of space that we could the bed is made up of two mattresses about that thick stacked together it's 180 centimeters long and just wider than a king single so what makes this a stealth camper what's what's so special about it 
Well, for one, it doesn't actually look like a camper van. There's no blue sticker in the back, that's not legally required, and that's kind of how we want it to keep it. It's very inconspicuous. It just looks like a tradie has come to your house. Very much like that guy. Kind of looks a bit like that. The second feature is this whiteout. This whiteout is incredible. We're really close to the van and you can't see inside it. Let's see if I... You still can't... There we go. You've got to really get up close to see inside it. And as you back off, there's nothing. You cannot see inside the van in broad daylight. From the inside, well, you can see everything outside it. From inside the van, one of the biggest giveaways that something is a camper van is when light escapes. At night, your light will escape through your windows or your window coverings. We have designed the White House to have raised shelves and the overhead stuff will just come down so that the curtains are completely covered. There's no light that will leak from above the curtain or below the curtain or for that matter from the side of the curtain because they all have little magnets sewn into them and they just clip into place just like that all of them and let's pull this one shut and show you they have magnets in the middle as well they snap shut they've got two layers and they're complete blackout curtains same with the front there's a lot of material so as you shut the curtain this bit here stops any light from leaking through okay it's broad daylight outside and this is me sitting inside with all the curtains shut just gonna turn the light on this is how bright the lights are and at night you can have all the lights on inside with the curtains drawn and you won't see anything from the outside that is super handy if you are stopping for the night somewhere and you're miles away from a campsite you take your home with you wherever you go so you can pretty much pull over wherever you want and have a sleep during the day or night without being disturbed by anyone else it is a low roof van so you can't stand up in it but we've designed it so you don't have to if you're sitting up there you can sit on the bed right here and use the mirror the sink is a little bit far away so if you're just using the sink if you're doing the dishes things like that you can pull this toilet out now you can sit here and you can wash the dishes you can do whatever you like in this area let's say you want more space your, your food prepping we'll put this back there's always chemicals in the toilet which is why you can hear it's flushing around then we've got the short table grab that there then we just open this one here the table then slots into that gap in between just up there and there's a gap in there and now still sitting on the bed you can use the table now you're done with the table let's put it away it comes out and just slots like that next to the bed push it down and it's put away put that away and that's done now there's another table you can sit back on the bed and grab the big table out it sits on the lid there and it sits on the lid on this side it's got a couple of cup holders you just slide it up put your food on here pop your netflix on and again when you're finished you just grab it push it down into place and the table stowed away nice and easy let's check out some of the extras open up the van Whoop. let's get onto the roof on the roof we have the 200 watt solar panel we have the rooftop deck imagine laying down with a pillow maybe a blanket looking at the stars in the middle of the night or maybe it's a sunny day and you want to tan or you just want to be away from everybody else well guess what you can come up here you can do some exercise if you wanted i've spent hours up here i, I really do love our rooftop deck oh and the roof rack has another feature so the roof rack is slightly higher than everything else so it hides the solar panel it hides the rooftop deck it doesn't look any different to any other roof rack until you're up here there isn't a ladder this is really hard to record 
where we put our foot down there, our foot up there, and then the next foot whoo, goes onto the roof and you're up. Van does have a tow bar. If you wanted to get a caravan and, I don't know, add an ensuite or something, every single detail of this build has been overthought, really, and designed specifically to be comfortable, to be ergonomic, to give you the lifestyle where you can travel, have a great time, have a comfortable bed to sleep in, all without having to pay rent. Over the two years that I've spent living in the White House, I have saved enough money to buy a house. I'm not saying that this is going to be for everyone. On the contrary, this is not for everyone. This is for a very specific type of person. This is for someone looking for this exact lifestyle. Someone looking for a comfortable place to call home, be it full time or, or on the weekend. If this is something that brings you joy, if it piques your interest, if it makes you go, hmm, get in touch, I'll be happy to have a chat. It's no longer practical for us to have a big van outside our new home. So it kind of has to go. I will be very, very sad when it does go. This has been my home for a long, 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 long time and I will really, really miss it. Whilst living in the White House, I've been able to experience things, go places, do and see things that I never would have done without the comfort and the security that this home has brought me. I would have never been able to save the money to buy myself a, a house. If this lifestyle sounds like something that you may be interested in, have a look at the other videos on my channel. And if you are, get in touch. I'll be happy to, to give you a viewing and make sure that you have everything you need to start your new adventure. With all that being said, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.